All right, everybody, here's the uh, October garden update. Uh, I know it's a little late, but I took a motorcycle trip to uh, California, San Diego, California, to see my uh, uncle and cousin. So uh, obviously I wasn't here to do it. But upon return, you know, I found the garden has just done incredible. Maybe that's because I was gone. I don't know. But the weather did get co colder or cooler. I'm not going to say cold. It ain't cold. It's going to be 95 today, 95 tomorrow again. But the garden did take off. So these little plants here, these are just some peppers Margaret picked up. She uh, ended up getting them for a dollar a piece because they were pretty messed up. We're just going to try to revive them. Um, coming over here to like where we have bell peppers, you can see we got some bell peppers started there. We got a pretty nice one down there. Yeah, that's a, that's a real nice one. So this plant here has a couple on it. So even our, our peppers are starting to, to, to do something, which is pretty exciting. Um, in our Vigo garden raised bed, uh, Margaret's got some stuff that she planted. She put some onions in. And these are supposed to be like separators. So she's got some leaf lettuces here. She's got romaine lettuces here. I think she planted, yeah, there they are. You can see the carrots over here popping up. And then she's got uh, peas along the back and we're gonna trellis those up the fence. So that's going to be our, like, we're going to try those as our winter crop, or part of our winter crop. Um, these sunflowers, where I had the big sunflowers I showed you in previous videos, one of them dropped it all of its seeds, and they self-sprouted. So we have a second round of sunflowers. They were supposed to be mammoth. The original ones were mammoth. They were huge. But these are blooming, and they're a lot smaller. So I don't know. Maybe they know the time of the year it is. And they're just trying to get a sunflower out, you know, before it gets cold. I have no idea, but didn't pay for them and didn't even plant them. They just came up on their own. These zinnias, you can see I got a whole whole row of them. What happened was we had a rainstorm that came in and we had one zinnia that had dropped its seeds. And that rainstorm washed all the seeds down this in between the rows and they all sprouted. So I left them because the bees like them, you know, and our bees are doing like phenomenal. Um, you can actually see them over here. There's one right there on the basil. They're, they're loving the blooming basil. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah, little bee. Um, radishes, some of our radishes dropped their seeds. So I've got radishes coming up on their own again. So here's radishes. We've had a lot of stuff just come up on its own, which is pretty exciting. Um, here's some more peppers, bell peppers. You can see we got some bell peppers there. And uh, our poblanos started producing. There's some poblano right there. And there's a real, real nice one growing down there. A couple more poblanos over here. It's amazing when the temperature cools down below 100, how the um, plants start growing. Our blackberries have basically rejuvenated. You can see they're nice deep green again, um, whereas they were dying off before with the, with the summer heat. Um, this tomato is just extraordinary. Uh, it started producing. We actually got some tomatoes off of a got them in the house. They're little grape tomatoes. They're little, little tiny round ones. They're real super sweet, but um, it's made it. It's done great. I mean, I'm real impressed with it for a tomato. We didn't know anything about it some company sent us to try. Um, some more radishes that came up on their own from seeds that the uh, previous ones dropped. Uh, the bees. So since the last time, uh, you can see I've got another box on. So I've got two, two, two brood boxes on. Uh, I went into the hive about a month ago and it was completely overflowing with, um, with nectar or with, with honey and brood and drones so uh, i had to put the box on there was there was no other option i'm just hoping at this point that the bees will fill that second brood box uh, before winter to have enough stores because now they're that, that promotes them to, to to grow the hive even bigger and they have been like massively active so i'm just kind of crossing my fingers the hive is strong there ain't no doubt about that um, but it's just if they're going to have enough time before uh, winter sets in to make the resources they need in that second box as they're, they're growing the hive right now. Let's get over here to this beehive real quick. 
as you can see it is like super massive um, they've got bearding going on on the outside if you look on top I've got another I put the honey super on with an excluder because uh, when I opened the other hive how full it was this one was the same but the um, top brood box was even even basically blowing out more with honey and and brood and, and drone cells so uh, I decided to go ahead and put a honey super on I don't want the hive to to split or to, to swarm on me to give them uh, you know something to keep uh, keep producing in so in Texas we can go sometimes all the way up in December with good weather so there is a good possibility that I could still get a honey harvest out of them um, they're definitely set in their top and bottom brood boxes for the for even the winter at this point so we'll just see if they they, they bring us some honey the hive has gotten like extra active and uh, they're in they're in, they're in they're in full work mode right now then let's go over here to the greenhouse now I showed you last time the tomatoes so this was uh, five weeks later you can see our Paul Ram greenhouse is about seven feet tall and our tomatoes are just our hydroponic tomatoes are overtaking the greenhouse it is insane how fast they're growing um, they're drinking up my hydroponic water uh, I've got to do about 10 gallons a week right now to keep the buckets full, which is still still a lot less water than the uh, the, the 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 garden, the dirt in the garden. Um, we've got blooms everywhere in here. You can see here some new ones started. There's some there's some blooms right there, and they're all over inside of here. There's more blooms started. There's some blooms there. They've just started to bloom, so there's some more right there. They're all over. I, they're just hidden in there. Even on, come on the outside of the, the greenhouse, and you can see blooms pressed up against the outside of the uh, of the greenhouse. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of insane. Um, I didn't think that they were going to do that much. Um, I can't wait till we get harvest because. Uh, these seeds are all our, our seeds from our garden But it's getting hard to get in there. That's the only thing I'm not sure about with it I'm happy with the first time doing hydroponics, but like I said, I can I can barely even get in there There's just a little tiny path over here to the left side um, we also moved out some Anaheim peppers But these are them And you can see they're doing pretty good having a hard time standing up I, I need to I really need like a trellis them or something this one has blooms there's a bloom right there there's another bloom um, but they're getting they're getting overtaken by the tomatoes now so they're not getting the light they need which I didn't expect this to happen I didn't I had no idea that these things were going to do what they did there's some more blooms um, I mean it's a good surprise no doubt it's just unexpected then we've got there's a habanero these are the ones we got from garden guru they've done quite well um, jalapeno in here now the jalapenos are producing there's a real pretty little jalapeno right there and uh, we got a chili pekin over here let's go look at it yeah there's chili pekins there love chili pekins they're hot now we're deeper into the garden here, into the uh, hydroponic tomatoes. Here you can see some more blooms. They're just all over the place. So we'll see what happens. Um, if they get this big, they're filling my greenhouse. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I would have to say for the first time ever doing hydroponics, um, that is actually quite successful. So anyways, looking at them. They're six foot tall. I'm six foot tall. So you can kind of get an idea of how big those things have gotten. Now we had another issue this year. It's just been a tough year. As you can see, maybe you can see, um, all the dead leaves up there, those are webworms. And they went through the entire south end of the city and just decimated trees. Um, all the webworm leaves fell out all over the garden it was just disgusting it doesn't hurt them but unfortunately 
the webworms themselves didn't get on the plants and hurt the plants. But um, man, with the heat, lack of rain, webworms, we've had a hard year. I've got a bee buzzing me too. This is not good. So let's get back here. So some of our container plants, we got, you know, here's some nice jalapenos, big cluster of them there. Got some growing up here on this plant now. Some more basils in pots. These are chili piquins that hasn't produced yet. So here's some more jalapenos in there. This is a habanero. There's a habanero. There's another little baby one coming up. There's one back there. So habaneros are doing good. This is another chili piquin. There's a little one right there. Uh, this tomato in the container, it's lived, but it's not looking very good. It's never produced a tomato. It's got some blooms there. Leaves are dying on it. I actually think that, I mean, this is just my speculation that these webworm things, because it's under the webworm, one of the trees that we had webworms in, I think those webworm branches fell down and maybe affected the tomato because it was covered with, you can see the, like the, the, the leaf carcasses with the webworm poop in it. And I think it hurt the plant. Now also, which we've had developing for a while now is limes. There's another one. We've got three three big ones here on this this plant, and not really sure why some of them are producing and the others aren't. Like this one's not doing anything. This one just popped a new one out. So that's the only one on the whole plant. But I mean, at least they're doing something. You know, that's always cool. And then the worm, the Vigo worm bin. Uh, the worms have been doing great. Uh, we dug around. I don't know if you remember. Maybe I can put a picture up of it with the plants from last update. We left some in the pekins. You can see some of them are, have, have produced some pekins, but they didn't grow very good here. Uh, probably because it's shaded. It gets almost almost 100% shade all day. But the worms are doing good in there. So you know that was the idea was to have a worm bin. Uh, but the plants didn't do as good as I had hoped, and probably just because of the location that we put the bin, it's just not getting enough sunlight. Back to the uh, indoor hydroponics. We had two bins like this, obviously you saw from the last one. Um, some of it was lettuce in the other one. We actually harvested and ate it. Uh, the other, there was, there was three tomatoes in there. Those tomatoes I took outside and put in the five gallon ones, and that's part of the big monster tomatoes out there. Three of the three of the eight that are, or sorry, three of the nine that are out there. We started inside. I had to get them out of here because they were too tall. But this is a. We had a bok choy here that I harvested and we ate. It was really good. You can see there's more bok choy. That's pretty good. I mean, it's as big as my hand. You know, down there. Um, I've got to learn next time to space them out more because some of these around the side, as you can see, are small. And it's because these leaves are covering them. I mean, they can't get any light from because of the leaves of, of the, the, the two big ones that I had. But that's okay. You know, we're, we're learning. Um, these lettuces, these, are, these were bib lettuces. Um, we let them go too long before we harvested them. And they're going to go to seed. So we might actually just let them go to seed and take seeds. But we've got a whole other round of hydroponics going in here. Some of them are doing okay. We've got like, you know, a few right here in the front that are dying off. Well, that's what happened last time though, but for the most part, everything's surviving. Um, I think out of uh, 48 plants here, we have about eight that are not gonna make it. So that's our next round. Most of this is um, lettuces. We do have some bell peppers here though. Um, we did the Anaheim last time that I showed you out in the, out in the greenhouse in the hydroponic that already that have blooms that got moved from here outdoors. And we're going to try that with bell peppers next. We also have some red salable seedlings. If you can see those. Man, those were started three days ago. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I actually don't even know where, where I'm going to put them because I don't have a place to put them at this point. So... And then these were some more bib lettuces that we were going to use for hydroponics that I simply don't have a place for. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Uh, I may try to take them out of the vermiculite and, 
and perlite mixture and either do pot or take them outside and maybe put them in a Vigo raised bed or something. Well, that was it. That was a garden update. Um, certain things have, you know, come back and are doing quite well. And uh, other things have died off, you know, like tomatoes that I had to pull out because they just were, they were dead. Um, but it seems like we're back into an active growing time, at least here in North Texas, uh, along with the wildlife, our bees and the plants. So I hope you enjoy the video. Um, if so, please, you know, give us a thumbs up. Uh, be sure and check out the website at uh, dayswellspent.com. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time.